After nearly four years since the investigation began, Ontario's Ombudsman released his long-awaited report into the Ministry of Community and Social Services' handling of crisis situations involving people who have an intellectual disability. The report, called Nowhere to Turn, detailed incidents of people being abandoned or inappropriately placed in hospitals, jails, homeless shelters, long-term care facilities, and sometimes subjected to abuse. Among Paul Dubé's 60 recommendations announced on August 24th is for the ministry to formally recognize its role in directly assisting with crisis cases and to bring in measures to prevent people from being returned to abusive situations or being placed inappropriately, along with greater interministerial cooperation. In 2014, as you all know, there was a major budget increase for developmental services, bringing annual spending in the sector to $2 billion this fiscal year. But the fundamental issue here has never been money. After all, it's incredibly costly to house people in hospitals and long-term care homes when they don't belong there. That money could be spent far more efficiently. What really made the difference is leadership and attitudinal changes at the ministry from the top on down. We have found that officials are no longer aloof and are more willing to engage directly in resolving individual crisis cases. They are no longer on the defensive when dealing with our office, and they see the value that we can add in helping them maximize service to Ontarians. Another key recommendation of the report is the requirement that the ministry report back to the office of the Ombudsman every six months on the progress and implementation of the recommendations until adequate steps have been taken to address them. Following the Ombudsman's report, the Minister of Community and Social Services, Helena Jasek, offered an apology on behalf of her ministry and accepted all 60 recommendations. When I heard the individual cases, there was no question I was appalled. Uh, that was an entirely unacceptable situation. Uh, so on behalf of the ministry, it certainly, uh, I think, behooves us to realize that we should have taken a much more active role. I think the Ombudsman has put it very well, that it was... Uh, uh, a little bit of um, relying on our community partners who were doing a good job. Obviously, they were trying for the best, but it needed central leadership from the ministry to ensure that each individual case was appropriately addressed. And the fact that that didn't happen, I'm, I can apologize for that. Chris Beasley, Chief Executive Officer of Community Living Ontario, was pleased with the release of the report and Minister Jasek's commitment to implementing the recommendations. Uh, I took heart in the fact that the Ministry has committed to, uh, has accepted and committed to implementing all 60 of them. Uh, We've not gone through them all yet ourselves, but that obviously shows there's a lot of work to be done. There's a lot of people who are in, who were in crisis and continue to be in crisis. What I took also took heart in is the minister's acknowledgement of those crisis situations, her describing them as unacceptable and apologizing for them. Add that to the ombudsman saying we still take and still want to hear about going forward instances where people feel like they're at the edge of the cliff with, with nowhere to go. Um, and you know, Minister pointing out they have the urgent response protocol. It seems to me that there is a huge commitment on from both those parties to deal with crisis situations so that they're immediately resolved. And that's what I would expect going forward. Linda Murphy travelled from Arnprior to Queen's Park to hear the details of the report in person. In May of 2014, she was prepared to leave her daughter in the government's care unless Ashley was provided with residential supports. Her daughter now lives in a home of her own and is supported by Community Living Upper Ottawa Valley. Uh, the Ombudsman, I was very pleased with his report. Uh, the threads in all his stories of people, some of them sound like my story, and I know there's many thousands of people in Ontario living through the same thing, and it touches so many people, and I've talked to so many people facing the same issues that my family and I have faced. Representatives from People First also made the trip to Toronto to hear from the Ombudsman and the Minister. They would like to see people directly affected by the recommendations involved with their implementation. People with disabilities must be at the forefront of every process and every recommendation that has to go forward because it doesn't 
necessarily affect agencies versus families versus many people. It affects the individuals. We're the ones that are on the ground. We're the yep. ones that are experiencing the challenges. We're the ones that have been labeled through society and, uh, and through systems. Um, but yet, we need to ensure that our voice um, and what we take is not, well, okay. No, we need to ensure that what we bring forward is valued. In Toronto for Community Living Ontario, I'm Ron LaRoche.